uh, is the network level. So if you wanted to not use the library of Cutlass, but instead you know rewrite something that spoke Cutlass protocol, uh, you would write look at the the protocol.txt document. Are there any questions at this point? Okay. So um, you've seen what we've got done so far, and in some ways we've done the hard bits. You know we've recreated a reliable transport layer. We've got audio working, but in other ways we've done the easy bits uh, because now we come to the interesting design decisions about how do the directory servers interact with the users to make sure that it, we end up with a highly usable experience. Cutlass right now is functional. It gets data from point A to point B over an encrypted channel, but it's not very usable. It's not highly user friendly and we really do want this to be software for the average person. So to handle uh, groups properly, we need to handle uh, other OS's, clients for other OS's, because all my friends use Windows, which I'm working on, but they still all use, well, not all of my friends use Windows, but some of my friends use Windows, and I'd like to talk to them. Uh, we need to activate the directory code in the clients. The directory code is in there now. We need to do the connection forwarding. That's going to be important for, you know, automatic NAT detection, for example. If you've got two guys behind NAT, you know, with UDP, actually, you have the ability, if you can set your source and destination port, which we can, you can punch holes through your NAT firewall unless it's randomly assigning ports on the outside. So we'd want to try that, and then if that doesn't work, automatically fall back to try and forward a connection through a friendly, someone that has that activated, uh, that will allow connection forwarding. And we'd like that to happen seamlessly, so you never need to know, hey, I've got to forward my connection through these three hops in order to get to my final destination. So we've got that auto detection uh, code to, to do. And then once we've got all that you know, easy stuff done, well, we'll put a video codec in there and you know, make a game plug in and, and, and everything will be blissful and wonderful. Uh, so in some senses, we've done the core, we've done the guts, we've done the hard stuff, but we've got interesting times ahead. <clears throat> Talking about what we have not yet done, uh, Cutlass groups, the, the grouping code isn't currently done. Yes, in the back. F oh, five minutes, okay. Actually, that's pretty good timing. Um, grouping code doesn't currently exist. Right now, it's just connections between individual point to points. If you want to have three people all connected together, they can all chat as a group, but they're all, if you're doing chats to messages to everybody, it's everybody you're connected to. There's no way of picking subsets of those people. Uh, so that's the grouping code. Uh, we anticipate that the groups will either be authenticated or unauthenticated. You know, the authentication types will be password or key whitelist, effectively, that you allow these people in and not those people. You can either advertise groups on directory servers or not advertise them on directory servers and no one will know about them. Um, and that code is in the directory server code. Uh, However, when we do group communication, we will not have a central group server a la Silk. You know, Silk, do you guys know Silk? Encrypted IRC chat? It, it, it's not bad. But there is a central point. It's the central IRC server, and everybody shares that IRC server key. If the IRC server were to be compromised, all communications going through that would be owned effectively. Uh, the way that we want to do Cutlass is it will still be point to point communications. What you'll just have is a group owner who will tell all group members, hey, here's who's in the group. And then at that point, you'll know who to send your messages to when you're sending it to that group. Um, those will be the super ops. The super ops will have a, a, there will be a private group key associated with each individual group. Uh, if you do give out super ops, you're actually sharing that private group key so that you can effectively sign you know, statements of here's who's in the group. You can't revoke that. Uh, there is no effect of you know, revocation of super ops. You could also delegate trust via regular ops. Uh, so that would just be a super op attesting that you should listen to this guy's decisions. He would not get a copy of the private group key. That authority could be revoked, uh, and that would allow for your regular op wars that you normally have fun with on IRC channels. The only problem is, is that if the super op went away, he would not be able to designate new regular ops, and the group could fall apart. So you might want to distribute your super ops, distribute that group key. Uh, directory servers, the code is in there, uh, has been added over the past uh, couple months. Uh, anyone can be a directory server by default. We don't want to have any kind of central directory structure. Uh, but currently, you can store registered users so that you can all decide to meet. You guys play, you know, Battle.net kinds of things. You know, you, you meet on, you know, Azeroth East, for example. So you'd pick a directory server that you'd go meet up on. Um, 
one of the things that we're not doing right now is we're not trying to make this a central file repository. We're trying to just make this a list of users. And then presumably you could go out and there would be some functionality so that you could search files within those lists of users. Um, connection forwarding we're still working on, and I've talked about that uh, a little bit. And so really we would like you to help out. And there are a couple ways that you can help out. Um, one way that you can help out is by downloading the software and giving us feedback, uh, and that would be very much appreciated. Uh, we have a mailing list. It's actually an encrypted mailing list uh, using uh, PGP. So when you send ma a mail to Cutlass Subscribe, it will actually send back the group key, the, the list key in the response, and then uh, in your, you know, yes, this was not a spoofed email, that your, your actual uh, activation message, if you include your uh, private key, or not, not your private key, sorry, whoa, uh, it's a little early for me. If you include your public PGP key, you will be on the list and all messages will be encrypted to you. So it, it's kind of a neat software and it gives you a the pain that current encryption technologies have. Uh, if you do need help running that, I am more than happy to help out. I realize that not everyone's got their, their encrypted email set up flawlessly yet. Um, the other thing you could do is we actually have t-shirts that we are selling uh, at this con. They're brand new. Uh, and they are $15, and if you would buy one of those, that would be uh, spectacular as well. Um, so at that point, are there any questions? Well, I thank you very much, and uh, I'll be here. <laughs>